Up. So and Chris, now we're getting ready for the WBA World Heavyweight Championship. John Tate defending his first defense against Mike Weaver. John Tate, big man, 232 pounds. Let's learn something about this big guy and visit with him. Okay. Big John Tate first made a name for himself at the 1976 U.S. Olympic boxing trials when he overcame a relative lack of experience to win a final and a trip to Montreal. There, the great Cuban Teo Stevenson unloaded one of his legendary right-hand bombs to shatter John Tate's dream of an Olympic gold medal. Tate turned pro against Jerry Tompkins and started the slow process of learning what it takes to be a professional in the ring. He was crude and sometimes clumsy in the early days, and it wasn't that easy for John in the beginning. Against Eddie Lopez, he had to struggle for a split decision win. But last year, his name went up on the marquee with this first round destruction of Dwayne Bobby. Then he battered Kali Karotze from pillar to post to win a shot at the WBA version of the title. Finally, before 80,000 hostile fans in Pretoria, he showed his remarkable stamina and a smart fight plan that wore down South African Harry Kutsia and won the WBA heavyweight crown, a title that had been vacated by Muhammad Ali. Earlier, I had a chance to sit and talk with Big John. I asked him if he considered it important to set the pace in tonight's fight. Uh, I'm going to do what I want to do out there. And uh, ain't nobody can do to vent me for not doing what I want to do out there. And uh, I think that's very important in all fights that going, to, going out and stabbing yourself in the early rounds, fighting the kind of fight that you want to fight, and be able to win with it. I think that's very important. Against Ali. First off, do you know if it's true? Well, right now, I got my mind focused on Mike Weaver. This has not been a distraction, all this talk about Ali? No, because uh, before I can uh, let my mind exercise about fighting Mike Weaver, I got to defeat him first. And uh, until I can defeat Mike Weaver, I ain't to think about no Ali because it's going to be invisible for me to even think about fighting Ali until I beat Mike Weaver. If I don't beat him, it'll be Mike Weaver fighting. And uh, I'll beat Mike Weaver. I won't even tempt to think about Ali and anyone else for a second. An ex-Marine at 27 years of age is the challenger out of Pomona, California. Let's learn something about Big Mike. There hasn't been a whole lot of glory for challenger Mike Weaver, especially early in his boxing career. He lost to Leroy Jones in this fight for the North American Boxing Federation title and continued to struggle in small clubs. His first impressive win was a knockout victory over Stan Ward. But Mike Weaver was not yet ready for the big time. He continued to pay his dues and continued to improve his boxing skills and to show power punching, like here against Oliver Phillips, took him right out of the ring. It really wasn't until Mike Weaver shocked the Madison Square Garden crowd by giving Larry Holmes a real battle for the WBC heavyweight title that people started talking about his ability and not just his impressive physique. He was no longer just Hercules. He had Holmes in trouble early, but then just ran out of gas in the 12th round, and Holmes stopped him. In his last fight, he showed improvement. In his jab, destroyed Scott Ledoux, and that set him up for another shot at another title. Earlier, I talked with Mike Weaver. There are times, though, when a man has to push himself, really push himself beyond a barrier that maybe that he's never traveled before in order to exercise an opportunity such as you have. Have you driven yourself to a new level of physical and mental conditioning? Yeah, I drove myself to, you know, to the physical and I pushed myself. Where the time I used to run a few miles and they get tired and stop, now I just push myself past that point. And then to the mental, you know, to, I put myself to a mental peak too, to, you know, believing that I have confidence and faith in myself. So I put myself both physically and mentally. What about Mike Weaver, the man? What does this moment mean to you as a human being? Uh, this fight right here means, you know, uh, everything to me, you know. If I lose this fight, I might not get another shot at the title. It means, you know, it means the dream, the prayer, and everything I had coming true. You know, Tate made the champion today, Bob will be champion tomorrow, so it means everything to me. Now, as he comes into the ring at 232 pounds for his first defense. 
And he's going against a challenger who comes in at 207 and a half. So there is roughly a 25 pound edge for the champion Tate. All right, now we'll have the introdu introduction of the fighters. Uh, the ring announcer, Donnie Anderson. Introducing the challenger, weighing 207 pounds from Los Angeles, California, the number one contender, Mike Weaver. His opponent, weighing 232 pounds from Knoxville, Tennessee. That's why I asked Mike Weaver the question. If hometown crowds bothered him, because it's abundantly clear the bulk of this 12,000 or so in the building on a big ride with Big John Tate tonight. In the light heavyweight championship bout, Eddie Gregory defeated Marvin Johnson to take the title. Within the year, Marvin Johnson losing the WBC title and the WBA title. Following the Tate Weaver fight, we'll have Sugar Ray Leonard and Dave Boy Green from Landover, Maryland. And then we'll go on to Las Vegas to finish the night of champions. Larry Holmes defending against Leroy Jones. There's the tail of the tape. The weight you can see, 6'4 in height for the champion against 6'1. Three inches in height, three inches in a little less than three inches at not quite 78. It's like 77 and a half, but call it two inches and three inches in height, 25 pounds in weight. The referee is Ernesto Magana Ansarino, Nicasio Lorenzo Drake of Panama is a judge, and Cesar Ramos of Puerto Rico is a judge. It was a losing bout to Larry Holmes that really started Mike Weaver toward this moment. He had Larry Holmes in a bit of trouble early in their fight. Finally ran out of gas. Larry got him in the 12th. Now he's in against Big John Taylor. Thought by most people to be the toughest opponent that Tate has had here. John had three fights last year. He won the WBA title in Pretoria, South Africa, from Kutsia. Mike Weaver, a late bloomer at 27. Said he fully intended to set the pace of this fight, and so far here in the first round, he's doing it. Unloading some heavy stuff on Weaver against the ropes. There's been some question about the knockout punch or the power punching ability of John Tate. Mike Weaver was very quick earlier this week to point out the man's won 20 consecutive fights and he's knocked out 15 people. That tells me he's got some power. Stamina is one factor that we must watch. Tate is brilliantly conditioned, exceptionally so. Stamina, on the other hand, has been something of a problem for Mike Weaver. Heavily muscled man, but still not a big man, really, not a 207. With all of the development of muscles, you'd think he would be heavier. Frame is light. Keeper, keeper. Good. 20 seconds to go in round one. 
scheduled for 15 under WBA rules. Three knockdowns will stop the fight in the same round. Well, the first round is about done. Round number two, John Tate, the biggest man. It's easy to spot John. He towers above the challenger, Mike Weaver. John's in the white trunks, and Mike in the red trunks, and Weaver did not sit down between rounds. Tate trained by his manager, Coach Ace Miller, and Don Marshall. Mike Weaver. Manager is Don Manuel. Chief second is Ray Barnes. I guess one of the things that really got the attention of the people in the Los Angeles area, Mike, born in Texas, moved out to Pomona when he was very young, about two years old, went to Ganesha High School out there. And one day he had flopped around, hadn't done very well, and he was about ready to give things up in his boxing career. Tate just missed with that right. And he went down and he worked out with Eddie Bossman Jones. And Don Manuel was handling Jones at the time, and Weaver planted Eddie. He just whopped him upside the head, and down he went in the gym. And they got a hold of Manuel and said, you better come down and look at this big guy, because he's a horse. And then later, Weaver was working with Kenny Norton, and again was thinking about giving it up. But Kenny Norton encouraged him to continue his career. And so he had a tough loss to Larry Holmes and now he's up against Big John Tate. Not that bad to get two title opportunities. So quickly a hard right by Tate and a left by Tate. And that jarred Mike Weaver. Two hardest blows of the fight right there. Both of them coming from Tate. Serena of Mexico, the referee. Missed that shot to the head as he they moved underneath it. Now Weaver, I think, beginning to realize he's got to get out of there. John's leaning all over him. End of round two. All right, we're into round three now for the WBA Heavyweight Championship. And after the second round, Mike Weaver sat down. Eight comes out strong. John has pretty well controlled the pace of the fight from the beginning. Shoved Mike Weaver away as Weaver dug a left to the body. That's a good left hand by Mike Weaver. He caught Tate on the side of the head as John came in. And Serene, uh, the Mexican referee, asking Mike to keep his head up a bit. Trying to avoid a butt. Tate hooks him to the head and gets him. Well, Tate's just absolutely smothering Mike Weaver right now. Body. Long lead right by Tate. I don't know, I think it really did a whole lot of damage. It got the crowd pretty excited, but that overhand right right there hurt him. 
Tate really cutting loose here in the third round with a little more than a minute to go. Left hook to the jaw by Weaver. It was on the money. Tate blinked a little but comes right back. Half a minute to go, round three. Tate gets him with a right and a left and a left to the body and finishes him with a flurry at the end of round three. The champion in the white trunks, John Tate, the challenger. In the dark trunks, the red, Mike Weaver. This is round four. Weaver had one good shot in that third round. He caught Tate flush on the jaw with a short left hook. Tate has just sort of moved back around pretty much so far in the fight. With a 25-pound head. Flurry sends Weaver back into the ropes. Not much, a whole lot of punishment in that little group of punches. Tate's going at a pretty heady pace. I suggested he was in exceptional physical condition. At this pace, we're going to find out. Long right hand got in there again. Another one by Tate. This time it is Weaver with a right and a left hook. Excuse me, Weaver, not Gregory. Sorting through the history of this night in the years to come as Tate comes in and just misses with that long right hand lead. The story of Eddie Gregory's win over Marvin Johnson will be told and retold so many times. He suddenly unleashed a furious barrage of blows to stop Johnson in the 11th round. That was the bout that opened the action in our night of champions. Sugar Ray Leonard and Dave Boy Green follow this one, and then Larry Holmes and Leroy Jones. Hard right to the body by John Tate. Mike Weaver. Again. Followed by the Mexican referee to watch your head. Watch your head. Take a look. Referee, I got enough trouble. This big old tree trying to fall on me. He's taller than I am, and I gotta weather the storm somehow. Get down with him. Get down. Back in there. Back in there when you're in there. All that body. Tate a bit wild. He's spending a lot of energy here in this round with flurries that aren't having any effect. Weaver, on the other hand, is getting a little sharper. Mike's finding him some on that infighting. At the end of round four. All right, it's round five. A small cut in the corner of the right eye of John Tate. I told you that Weaver's getting sharper on the end fighting, and he found him a couple of times with the left hook and opened up a little cut there. John Tate forcing and forcing and forcing, got a little wild in the round. Tremendous pace on the part of Tate, and he has been told by Ace Miller, pace yourself a little bit here in this round and get your breath back. So John looks like he's going to stay outside a bit here. And he's got an advantage in reach, at least two inches. All of a sudden, it's Tate moving away. It's the first time it's happened in the fight.
normally thought that Mike Weaver All right, back. Is, does his best work when he's coming at his man. Well, John Tate is sort of giving him a chance to come at him here in round number five, and we'd like to alert our local stations that at the end of this round, we're going to take a station break. Right hand off the arm, John Tate. I think actually John's having a little trouble staying away from the man. Uh, Ace Miller, Don Marshall wanted him to stay outside and coast a bit. Restore himself, but now he's moved back in. Found him with the left and the right. Caught him in that right hand as John was coming in. They just pretty good movement for a big man. Came in at 232. He was advertised at 240. When he and uh, could see her, but uh, he said he never weighed 240. He's never been heavier than 237. Crowd 12,769 paid. And we'll be back with more of the WBA World Heavyweight Championship after... This word from our local station. Roy Jones, Larry Holmes holds the victory over Mike Weaver, and it was Weaver's showing against Larry that earned him this opportunity. John Tate, who had a small cut open in the corner of his right eye back in the fourth round, had it reopened in the fifth. Now apparently Big John is got his win back because he once more wants oh good right hand by Tate and wobble Mike Weaver something coming up next Sugar Ray Leonard out of Landover Maryland his hometown against Dave Boy Green lucky fellow from England amateurish there. He took a big lunge at him and got whacked along the side of the head for making that mistake. Mike Weaver the very poised so far in this fight. Conserving energy perhaps. Waiting to open it up. Tate has just sort of bulled him around except for the fifth round which appeared to be Mike Weaver's best round. Do it again. Come on. Mike just missed with that whistling right. Tate gets him with the right hand lead again. The champion of the white trunks and the challenger goes to the head and the body and scores with both the right and the left at that time. Weaver now starting to find Tate's head a little bit with that left jab. And the right eye is getting a little puffy. Weaver gaining a little momentum here in the sixth round. Round six is about over. Round 
27. John Tate, the champion in the white. Mike Weaver, the challenger in the red. WBA heavyweight championship at stake here. Weaver now appeared a little sharper in that sixth round. A little more movement. Tate's right eye. Little puppy. Left hand. Weaver getting through. Right hand. Along the side of the head of Tate by Weaver. Ace Miller in the corner. Shouting into the ring for Tate to try an uppercut. Right at that point, uh, the referee and Serena was concerned about a almost low blow by Tate. Weaver trying to fight his way off the rope, giving away 25 pounds. John won't let him off. Stuns him with a right hand. There in the corner by John Tate. Less than a minute to go in round seven. That's right. It was the first round KO of Dwayne Bobbick that really launched the year of 1979 for John Tate. And he went on to beat the South Africans and get the title. Now there's been a whole lot of talk about the winner of this one being matched up with the next comeback of Muhammad Ali. All the talk around this part of the country has been an Ali Tate match. So Mike Weaver came to town and very quietly and politely reminded everybody that uh, he had some ability too. John's losing his britches too. They've slipped down quite a ways. You better get a safe pin here. End of round seven with a Tate Flurry. Mike Weaver, the ex-Marine, 1968 to 71, had his first taste of formal boxing at Camp Lejeune. Out challenging John Tate, the WBA heavyweight championship. I'm telling you, you better pull up John's britches. They're going to fall off. Into the area now where you start thinking about you know, the durability of a man or stamina. Both men look fresh. Still good movement by Tate the bigger. Oh, good right hand by John. He's getting home with that right hand lead a lot. So far, Mike Weaver has been relatively impassive in the aftermath of it. Really hurt him, I guess. Looks like they've been able to control that little cut in the right eye corner. Just at the edge of the right eye. Tate. That's a quick, ooh, good overhand right that time. By Tate. It was a good, quick, solid left by Weaver as well. Porter's been trying to get John to go for an uppercut in the infighting. First time we've seen him try the overhand right. And it worked. The left and the right by Weaver to the head of Tate. Keep your hands in back. Right back. Come on. Right back. Come on. Right back. 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 
We're in round eight with 12,769 people in the Stokely Athletic Center here at the University of Tennessee. We were trying to hook to the body, most of it blocked. They tried to hook to the head, most of that blocked in that exchange on the rope. Snaps his head back for the uppercut as we come to the end of round eight. The corner of John Tate. Right hand, man, then get him out. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to uh, pull your trunks up when you stand up here. Want to pull them up? Okay. Ace Miller talking to him. I'm right here with you, John. Just spit it. Now, John, don't Slow walk motion. in on the guy. Try to move Watch your the head uppercut that, that they've been talking about. Try to use some faces. John finally got inside here but right and used it. Straighten Mike Weaver right up. Well, that's the blow or the punch, at least, that the corner's been asking for quite a while. Here we go to round nine. Tate's been in control of the fight from the very beginning. Weaver's going to have to flurry. He's going to have to somewhere along the way here pretty soon. Make a stand. Right hand snapped onto the jaw of Mike Weaver, but didn't seem to show any effect from it. Tate's landed enough blows. If he doesn't do some damage to Mike Weaver along the way in this fight, I think a lot of people are going to be questioning his power. Right now, Weaver may be in trouble. Grimacing as Tate hit him hard on the upper portion of the head. It did not appear he got him in the jaw area. Mike hooks hard. Side of Tate's head. John's got him pinned here on the ropes. Tate's been all over him all night except for one half of one round. With a crowd of more than 12,000 roaring in the background. He's their man, Big John. Oh, there's a pretty nifty left snapped into the face of Tate. There's another one. Weaver beat him to the punch that time, got off just in time to stop Tate's right. Left hook was in the face of Weaver. Less than a half minute to go. Tate had him on the rope, set him up. Now he ripped it into him. Arms are getting a little low on Mike Weaver, too. Be a little tired. After nine rounds of this. All right, here we go to round 10. And to be very succinct about it, the manager of Mike Weaver just told him in the corner, you're fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. You're not throwing into punches. You've got no chance to win the fight if you don't go out and throw some punches. 
I think that pretty well sums up the circumstances right now. Pete got him with that right hand lead again. The man has been down. Tate cut very slightly in the corner of the right eye, but otherwise, Mike Weaver doesn't appear to be marked. But he's got to be getting a little sore and tired. Been sort of looking for the all pro thumb that Larry says uh, Mike carries, but I've seen no evidence of it tonight. The particular glove they're using tonight also does not have the prominent thumb that one another brand of the gloves has, so that might also account for part of it. Some one brand of glove has a very big thumb. This one has a smaller, less obvious thumb enclosure. This particular glove. Well, Tate's just controlling the pace, doing pretty much what he wants, just pounding away on Mike Weaver. And he's got the crowd roaring. Weaver hasn't thrown enough punches in the last five rounds to make hardly any difference at all. All right, we've just about finished 10 rounds here in Knoxville. Let's go to Las Vegas right now. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Into round 11 we go. Off the campus of the University of Tennessee. Sugar Ray Leonard, taped and wrapped and ready. I'm sure Dave Moore Green is all pumped up. And they'll be next in our night of champions from Landover, Maryland. Time is of essence here for Weaver. Tate has built up, I'm sure, a huge cushion in the scoring and totally dominant in the fight. At this juncture, probably the only hope Mike Weaver would have would be to nail the big guy, and turn it all around. Pretty good left popped in there by Mike Weaver. He went 12 in his bout with Larry Holmes. Tate hasn't given him hardly any chance to hold tonight. John has just smothered him from the very beginning. Larry put him down and out in the 12th. In their bout. Tate so far. So far, John has not been able to put his man down. Mike Weaver, on the other hand, unable to mount any returning offense. You get a left. 
left hand slapped in your face like that. Straight left with 232 pounds behind it. You have to feel it. There's been a lot of in the last 40 minutes. Mike Weaver getting a word from Angelina about that low blow. Well, 11 rounds of John Tate's first defense in the books. Between rounds, the plea continued to Mike Weaver. Throw more punches. This is round 12. John Tate defending the title he won from Kutsia in Pretoria. John going to the body right, then the left. Weaver looks listless. Come on. Come on, make it Come on, do something. Come on, follow him up. Overhand right on the jaw by Tate. Wicked left hook by Weaver. Tate goes back into the rope. Tate may be hurt. Weaver hits him. she was looking for and John Tate is there. Weaver is wild. Can't get the Tate. Tate leaning back on the rope. Tate almost put down with a left and then a right. Tate hang it on. Minute 15 to go in round 12. Right, left, there's a right hand on the jaw of Tate. We were desperately trying to get to the big guy. Tate had totally dominated this fight up to the 12th round. And he almost went down for the left hook. And suddenly it is Weaver, the pursuer, the man in charge. And Tate's hanging on. First time in the fight that Tate had been jarred. Starting to roar, big John Tate. Weaver continues to pursue him. Mark under the left eye of John Tate. Weaver's got him pinned in the corner. Can't seem to get through it and do any damage to it. Weaver still chasing his man. Wailing away the closing seconds of the 12th round. But Tate's going to escape it. Well, if you've wondered whether John Tate could take a punch, have a look. First Tate with a right to the head. Then Weaver comes with an overhand right, and there's the big one right there, that left hook flush on the jaw. Look at it from this angle now. Tate overhand right, not a whole lot on it. Goes to the body, comes back over the top, then the overhand right by Weaver, and then pow. A big left hook flush on the jaw, and it rattled John Tate right? right down to his shoelaces. You sure? Yeah, yeah Joe, don't try to trade with the son of a bitch when he starts out early. You hear me? Huh? Come on, man. Come on. Act like a goddamn champion. You hear me? John Tate. John Tate in the corner getting some strong advice as you watch live from Knoxville, Tennessee. And for the first time, there is some concern in the Tate corner. Round 13. Weaver had him going and 
Hamilton. Tate got away. John moving easily. Weaver looking for a hole. Land one more big one. Or two or three. There's the left. Partially deflected by Tate. Almost got it in there. The later going, it was Eddie Gregory stopping Marvin Johnson tonight for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. And it was a powerful body attack by Gregory that ultimately made the difference in that one. We're looking now at the WBA heavyweight champion John Tate, the challenger Mike Weaver. In the 12th round, Weaver almost put Tate down, and it was the first time in the fight that he'd done anything. Earlier, it was Eddie Gregory beating Marvin Johnson, and right after this fight, we'll see Sugar Ray Leonard and Dave Boyd Green, and then Larry Holmes and Leroy Jones for the WBC heavyweight championship. WBC World Welterweight Championship coming up with Dave Boy Green and Sugar Ray Leonard. Weaver's looking for the big one because Tate just smothered him for 11 rounds. Come on, Mike. Then in the 12th, Mike landed shot to the head with the right side, came back with a wicked left hook, and John Tate almost went down. There was plenty of time to go, too, like half the round, and Tate got away from it. Back him up, Mike. Back him up. Back him up. Come on, Mike. Back him up. 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 Weaver's got to land the big one in order for Mike Weaver to win this fight. He's got to put John Tate on the deck. If not, knock him out. Certainly got to put him down. Come on, Mike. We've just about finished 13. We'll be back with more of the WBA World Heavyweight Championship after this ABC News Brief. Ed, thank you very much. And again, we look in on Messrs. Tate and Weaver with round 14. Weaver pressing the issue now. He's in a posture of desperation. No question about it. Take a point away this time for the low blow. So he loses a point there for the low blow, like that. Left and right by Tate. Weavers had one big round, the 12th, and he almost put the champion down with a right-left combination. There's the right hand. Not much in that one. Tate just rolled back in the head. Didn't have all that most force in it. Pretty good left to the body by Weaver. We were boring in, boring in, looking for a place to plant one. Can't find it. Good heart, chopping right hand by Tate. Caught Weaver coming in. 
Another right by Tate. Left hook. Got the champion. Tate Sachs back into the ropes. That's the second time in the fight that Weaver has tagged him. I don't think that one had as much on it as the other one back in the 12th round. But John Tate instantly looked into his corner when Weaver popped him with that left hook. So we're in uh, 14 here in Knoxville. Right now, let's join Chris Schenkel. He lost only two fights. A devastating puncher, 26 knockouts. That bout will be coming up soon, scheduled for 15 rounds for the WBC Welterweight Championship. Now back to Keith Jackson. All right, Christopher, now back here in Knoxville, looking into Mike Weaver's corner. You're looking at a tired warrior. He's never gone 15, as you see, in his professional career. Looks like he's going to do it tonight, but he is flat tired. Let's bring that trophy home, Mike. We gotta go to work. Don't worry about that. Mama's out there watching, Mike. Let's go to work. Well, I'm sure the spirit's willing, but I'm not sure the body has a whole lot left in it. We'll see. He did rattle take some in the late going there, the 14th round, and Big John better get off the ropes, I would think. He looks into his corner, and that's what they're trying to tell him to do. Stay out in the ring and move around. You got it in the bag. Don't get yourself pinned and get nailed. We warn our local stations that after the decision, the decision at the end of the round, we'll be taking a station break. That right hand by Weaver was a little high on the side of the head. Both men now showing some wear and tear. Both men obviously tired. We were pressing the fight here in the 15th round. The man they everybody said they doubted he had the stamina to go 15. Still pressing the issue. As a matter of fact, he's more active here in the 15th than he was in the fifth. has a 25 pound edge though and that makes a difference when you get into a situation like this where everybody's flailing away or where the other man is desperate You've got that much of an edge you can climb up I see some blood on the shoulder of Tate that's got to be coming from somewhere and so far I haven't exactly seen where there's a overhand right high on the side of Tate's head by Weaver I guess Mike Snow's bleeding a little bit maybe what it is Left turn, Tate goes down in his face. Weaver hit him with a left hook, and Tate is down. Oh, he's just beginning to move. The fight is over. Weaver has knocked him out in the 15th round. With less than a minute to go in the 15th round, Weaver knocked him cold. Incredible. been battered and bombed all over the place all night long in the 12th round he got John Tate in a flurry almost put him down and then got Tate back in the corner on the ropes and hit him with the left hand and Tate has scarcely moved since he went down the doctors have moved into the ring to have a good look at him and I'm not sure that he's regained the, well, is he moving? Yeah, he's all right. Okay. But what an incredible finish. As Tate had this fight in the bank, and he got tagged first in the middle of the round by a left, and then back here in the corner, bang to the body, there's the left hook. It hit him right on the button, and he went right down on his face, and he went out. He really didn't move. 
until he was counted out at 2.15 of the 15th round. Well, how do you do? Stunning turnaround. Absolutely startling. Tate now is up sitting. Still stunned from that crushing left hook by Mike Weaver. His corner had yelled at him for at least 10 rounds. Throw some punches. Throw some punches. Go out and fight the man. Well, he started in the 12th, and in the 15th, he ended it. There's the right to the body. Here's the left hook that ended it. Pow! Right there. Mike Weaver is the new WBA heavyweight champion. My goodness, what a turnaround. We'll be back with more from Knoxville after this word from our local station. Mike, congratulations. Absolutely stunning. I didn't see how in the world you could do it without knocking him out, and suddenly there it was. Well, I, I, I felt that I was behind in the fight. I was letting Big John take the play, out jabbing and out moving and everything. I was a little tight, but you know they told me I was behind the 14 round, and I had to go all out to win. I had to win by knockout. So That'll shut up a lot of people who questioned your stamina, won't it? Yeah, sure. Look, I, I wasn't tired really, but I was just seemed like I was tight. So I like to thank my mother, my pastor for our prayers, and all the people who prayed for me. I'd uh, give special thanks to Stoneville, Ohio, for all their support. And a big heart in your own body. All night long, uh, Mike, the, your corner was talking to you, saying, throw more punches, throw more punches. Well, like I said, I was just tight. I've been practicing on throwing punches in the gym, but got in the rear, kind of got tied up, froze up. I guess it was just a crowd, but, but Tate, you know, I had to fight with Tate. He's a big guy. He has stamina. He's strong. Punch is good. Man. And then he was out, out maneuvering, out pushing one thing you need to work on is your gymnastics. You didn't quite turn that flip when you tried it. <laughs> so it didn't. Congratulations, uh, Big Mike. You, you showed me as much heart as I've ever seen in a man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Mike Weaver. They're still working on John Tate in the corner. Doctors are still attending to him. He is still stunned. Right now, let us go to Landover, Maryland.